people here are, are pretty pretty strong about uh, welcoming diversity, gay and lesbian people. We have a, quite a good section in our congregation, social action. Uh, we've been doing this, talking about race series for a Is year and a half. Is that throughout the United States with the Episcopal Church? Is that true throughout the United States? Yeah, our national church on its website has a thing called about the beloved community which is a Martin Luther term team, term terminology, that we should all be in a community where we're, we're all beloved equally. Um, similar to the, the Christian idea of the kingdom of God, which is a similar kind of that Jesus talked about. Um, what's happened over the years is that a lot of um, uh, institutional religion has thought more about maintaining its own character rather than giving itself away its life, which is really what the church is supposed to be about. So a lot of us are getting back to some of that basic stuff in the beginning. That we're, we're here not to preserve ourselves, but to give ourselves away for the sake of justice, for the sake of, of, uh, of goodness, for the sake of beauty, to make the world a better place. Do you think that's what maybe separates the Episcopal Church from some of the more evangelical yeah, uh, what, the, Protestant Yeah, the, the evangelical, what we call fundamentalist churches, which believe everything is literal. Uh, they don't understand metaphor and uh, the deeper meanings of things, uh, and they use that as a as a way of keeping people in fear. And, uh, you got to believe this, or else you're going to go to hell, and all that kind of stuff. That's all going out the window. That never was what Jesus talked about. Uh, and I think all authentic religions don't do that. They don't use fear as a tactic to maintain their their status. Isn't that makes this church in particular is, and the, the uh, Episcopal Union different from other forms of Protestantism? You know, in, in all the different uh, mainstream branches of Christianity, we have, um, we have some, some folks that I think are more authentic of integrity, and then we have some that aren't so. You're going to find that in any, you're going to find that in, in, in an atheistic system as well. You're going to find some people that are troublemakers and helpful and others that are very authentic. And the secular nations in Europe tend to have fairly low crime rates, though, don't they? Compared to the United States, I mean, we have... Yeah, our crime... Well, we put people in jail. Our jails have more people in it than all the other jails in the world combined. Right, we have a lot of... Worlds in we have a lot of yeah. violent criminals, though. Yeah, so it's a form of slavery. We have a lot of violent criminals. We have a lot of violent criminals, though. But, but we also have a culture... That perpetuates. That, that perpetuates that. Really? Well, okay, in Wisconsin, if you look at Wisconsin, why does Wisconsin have the highest rate of incarceration for every type of minority male, even ones like Native Americans and East Asians who commit crimes at lower than average rates? Why is their incarceration rate not only the highest in the country here in Wisconsin, but it's much higher than this for white men? Yeah, exactly. We're going to be talking about that tonight. Yeah, it, it, it is interesting that there are microcultures within the American macroculture. We've had 350 years of slavery. The Emancipation Proclamation said it was illegal, but it didn't stop. And they just formed new ways. To convict somebody and put them in jail. Well, and, and they, 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 uh, they used people because they couldn't find a job. And they didn't do nothing. So they hired them, and when they hired them, they were essentially under the, the influence of the, of the corporation or whatever, and they essentially became slaves. They didn't have any other options. When a young kid today grows up, you know, they get that, that, that parent teaching about don't cause trouble with the police. Right. Because you keep your hands on the dashboard when they pull you over. Don't put your hands in your pocket. Uh, so that from, from childhood on, they're, they're learning that they are in some ways different and not as good as. Do you think, I mean, do you think white kids get that lecture too or no? They don't. Yeah. What they do? White, they do, does what? do white kids get that lecture about cops from their parents as well? Not no? the same way at all. Totally different. Like, do you have any studies to back that up? Or, like, oh, any, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. A lot of, a lot of data. <coughs> statistics. Tonight, they may get to that tonight. Some of that stuff. We have a, a social action uh, book group that actually meets this Wednesday here. Um, I'm reading a book now called The Syndrome of... Uh, children when they're, when, they're, when they're born into our culture and the American culture, uh, they're born into this inferior complex. Um, they, they are, in the education systems, uh, 
why is it in one of our zip codes that not 75 percent of all the men are in jail? The zip codes, then. then Milwaukee. Yeah. And Milwaukee is the most segregated. Milwaukee County is the most segregated county in the United States. We used to have laws uh, in our suburbs that said people of color, not just black people, people of color, it was illegal for them to purchase property. If they did, they'd be arrested and put in jail. Uh, Wasn't it up so until up until the fifties? It was also up until 1953, I think, that, that Zeidler, his socialist regime in, in the city of Milwaukee, yeah. had the Milwaukee Film Commission that banned kissing scenes in movies. Did they? I didn't that's know that. Why, that's why the Foxway Theater got built here on Silver Spring. I didn't know that. To show un, uh, Ed, uncensored hey, Cal, that's, movies. Hey, he's, he's Ed.